Oh, hey. How are you guys? Um, hey, guys. We're just having some coffee here this morning, and we are going to talk about some stuff that came up at the 8th grade team. Uh, there are some issues and concerns in the building right now. For sure. Yep. We're going to have some, some real talk about some real issues that affect real people here at SMART. All over a morning cup of Joe. Yep. So let's do this. And try to give you some, you know, real answers. Yeah. Real answers. Instead of just, it's the rule. It is the rule. But they are the rules. But there's more to it than that. There so. is. You know, there is. You know, it's the why behind it that really matters. You know, why are these rules in place? Right. If I understand why it's in place, then I'm more likely to be like, oh, well, yeah, that makes sense. Okay. Yeah. All right, mm -hmm. so first thing that came up is the backpacks. <clears throat> so yeah. black and white, you're not supposed to have them. But why aren't you supposed to have them? Mr. Costello, would you like to? Yeah, if that? you want to get down to it, right? Yeah. Um, it's not that we're all haters. Okay, um, but we're trying to keep everybody safe. Okay, so first of all, you don't have anything you need to carry from class to class that you can't carry in your Chromebook bag, which we provide you with, which is pretty generous, I think, actually. Yeah. Um, and it's a safety concern, right? In a backpack, you can conceal all sorts of stuff. Most people wouldn't, but it only takes a couple, you know, bad eggs to kind of get that right. You could have a weapon in there. There could be uh, drug-related items in your backpack. This is the same reason that you can't fly in an airplane, right, without having your luggage screened. Um, it just, it makes sense. You want to keep everybody safe and the society like, you know, jiving together. What do you guys think? No, wait, wait. So I understand backpacks. What about, what are these cool um, little bags that I bought at the store store, which True. is school provided and I use my school points on it. I mean, yeah. um, would this be considered a bag that is or is not allowed to bring Could in you school? Put a weapon or drugs in there and we wouldn't be able to tell. I think yeah, you probably, probably could. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Probably. Yeah. So, so these, but at high school, I no. think that this is maybe acceptable. I think so they next year, you do that. Yeah. I, I think, think so. so. In high school, only the drawstring ones, but I'm not yeah. sure because we don't teach high school. I'll let yeah. you know. I don't yeah. get to go to high school, perpetually yeah. in eighth grade. <laughs> yeah. Okay, um, next thing, food and drinks. So hard, yeah. fast rule, unless it's like water in a clear container, you're Key, really clear. not supposed to have anything right. else. So even like the fancy, like, cool water bottles, we're, unless it's clear, we're not actually supposed to let wait, wait, wait. the bottom. So I'm hungry, and yeah, I don't like that. the food here. So wait, wait, what did I... Breakfast tomorrow morning is a sausage pancake on a stick. How do you not like that? Well, um, I'm not a breakfast person. That's true. You know? That is true. And just, I don't I really get Some into it brunch. during breakfast. I don't get it. Or yeah. brunch. Okay. And honestly, like the bug issue here, I can oh, see that. Yeah. Even in class, there's always Cheetos on my floor and there's bugs. Yeah, it's just gross. It's a hygiene thing, right? Yeah, yeah. And I've heard of mice in classrooms, mm -hmm. which is a bad sign. That means yeah. it's just not a cleanly place. And the bugs, they don't even make it to third floor anymore. They are dead on the stairwell going up the stairs. Yeah, what does that say about what we're consuming too, right? So I mean, cockroaches that literally survived nuclear dying. holocaust yeah, are, dead. are dying from what we're putting in our body. So you're saying, you're saying that the food that they are consuming, the cockroaches are consuming, are making it so they aren't even able to climb the stairs anymore and they're dying half Yeah, they're there. just like little dead, obese, mm -hmm cardiac arrest <laughs> cockroaches <laughs> and that's not that's not a good sign no. i mean it's just a theory but I um i would i would think eat. there's a link there mm -hmm. yeah. yeah so be careful about what you're bringing to school what you're eating and what you're consuming I definitely be careful yeah. what you're eating live a healthy mm -hmm. lifestyle people. yeah and they, they spill them right if yeah, everyone could do. eat cheetos without spilling them everywhere yeah. like that would be a different we're getting thing. like the weird red hands but you guys are messy when oh you eat. Yeah. and then what do you do do you lick them off you do and then do. and then they touch their chromebook yeah. oh. or you make a big deal about <laughs> how you have to go to the bathroom yeah. wash your hands and then you're missing out on learning which is mm -hmm. not good either yeah right. what's next yeah so um so we have dress code this yeah, one is yeah. directly from miss mm -hmm. gasho so Yes. Mm -hmm. The rule is that your pants should be on and we should not be wearing hats. Right. So Wait. pants on, hats off. Maybe they're confused. Oh, pants maybe on, hats on. Maybe they're thinking hats on, pants off. Maybe. That's kind yeah. of weird though. Don't you think? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It is weird. Uh -huh. Drop your drawers randomly. Yeah. But I got cool shorts underneath. Yeah. They are cool shorts, but it's not the time or the place. No. Um, undressing yeah. at school, this might surprise you, um, is not appropriate. No. In the bathrooms? Um, Maybe, maybe okay maybe because mm -hmm. sometimes it's chilly in the morning and then it's hot in the afternoon right. so yeah. i could dress in layers and then oh, i take I, my my pants to my locker right. if i'm remembering this meeting right yeah. though this is literally happening in class kids are like just taking their pants oh yeah, yeah mm -hmm. i've heard multiple stories about okay. that That's right. i haven't seen it in my class no. yeah. Thanks, so guys, but pants yeah. on hats off yeah yeah don't get that confused mm -hmm. yeah. yeah pants on hats off um so 
Uh, <laughs> Miss Weissart's gonna step what? out for yeah. a second. The phone's ringing on the side there, so she's gonna go take care of that. She'll be right back. So the hat rule, um, it's just kind of a distraction. Um, yep. It's not like a huge deal for me, but it's just a distraction, and it, they're just not so like never was it ever okay that hats. Well, were I think it kind of goes back right to a time where like it was just a sign of respect, right, and yeah. dignity that when That's you walked true. into a yeah. building, you took your hat off. So yeah. personally, for me, when I'm not here, this might surprise people, but I have like a huge hat collection. I love hats different ball caps so I'm like always wearing a hat when I'm not at school I've never seen you wear a hat though because I'm always at school oh but like for instance when I leave today in my car it is my really cool red ball cap that I'm gonna totally throw on before I go to the baseball game tonight for my kids but mm -hmm. while I'm here out of a sign of respect and love and for my job and the people I work with I leave it in my car so and you know what? I I respect that you respect the um, integrity of the workplace with what you wear. Thanks. It shows a, a bit of professionalism that, that you take the do. education yeah. very seriously yeah. in what you do. Yeah. Alright, next thing, um, throwing things. You know, projectiles. Yeah. Mm -hmm. that, that's an issue in class. Not good. Uh-uh. So uh, we're talking like... period. Yeah. You know what we're talking about. So we're talking like paper balls, ninja stars, airplanes, little football things. Broken pencils. Yeah, books. ooh, that one's bad. Mm -hmm. Books. Yeah. books. Uh -huh. So not only is this a safety concern, right? Yeah. It's not resor respecting our resources. Yeah. And it honestly, uh, if the last couple of days have taught us anything, usually just leads to drama, which could potentially lead yeah. to uh, fighting and things that we don't want, right? We want to have a pleasant experience while we're here at Smart. Yeah. There's definitely people that are not a fan of having to be worried about getting hit by pencils and paper. Yeah, a I'm, a, paper, I'm right? a fan of not being hit by pencils or paper. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I wouldn't no. like it either. No. You know, no. I'm just trying to get my learn on and oh, yeah. ninja star. Yeah, that's not cool. Yeah. So let's not do that. All right. Um, you want me to hit this one? Yeah. yeah. All right. This is so not. this one's going to get a bit awkward. I'm just going to warn you, but it's real talk, right? Yep. Right so down. let's just go there. Um, myself I hear this a lot in my classes uh, this has been a huge concern from other teachers um, there are certain things in a classroom that are appropriate to talk about and other things that maybe we shouldn't talk about in class for example the number of people talking about their sexual experimenting that they're doing with maybe their boyfriend or girlfriend or ideas again I said about. it's gonna be awkward not something we should talk about during learning time, right? Right. Um, pornography, that's a thing, right? That people do sometimes. Not probably something you should talk about during class. Then there's a lot of brain research on this stuff that we're not going to bring into this conversation. But the point is, porn, sexual stuff, drugs, alcohol, maybe other things that wouldn't be appropriate to talk about in the classroom that maybe you do on your own time or on the weekend. And to be honest, if we should we're leave real, out I mean... They're illegal for their age groups. Like yeah, that's kids, a good point. I mean, like so you're kind of incriminating like, yourself considering all of your yeah. teachers are mandatory reporters. Like we legally are required to tell somebody if we overhear you talking about something that you shouldn't be doing. Otherwise, we would lose our license, which would mean we'd lose our jobs and our family yeah. would be on the street and we'd have no food and yada yada yada. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And not to mention the fact that I think we genuinely care about you and we don't want you doing things at a young age that you shouldn't yeah. be doing. Right? That's right. going to lead to a life of unintended consequences that you don't want. Right. So, um, it's just uncomfortable kind of for everyone yes. and it's, it's just awesome. not appropriate like and you're sharing a lot of personal information that as a teacher I don't want to know but also like as other classmates they just don't want to know about you. So right. maybe just like kind of keep it like PG in class for the teachers and the other kids there. It's just Great. not the place. Mm -hmm. Where is the place? You know, here at school, I'm with my friends, um, and I want to talk about things that I'm hearing or seeing. Where can I talk about this? Um, I feel like if you have to be secretive about it, like if you couldn't have that conversation with your parents, maybe it's not like something you really should be talking about. Um, but Could I, I like, like outside of school, like not near well, like staff and I think members. To go to your point, Ellen, I think for me, Part of it is that I don't think necessarily that a 13-year-old or 14-year-old 
should necessarily be doing some of these things. Mm -hmm. So I definitely don't think they should be talking about it. But the reality is some are. Right, yeah. And some maybe have questions or concerns mm -hmm. or they want to verbalize this. Yeah. And mm -hmm. I think that can be done in a more appropriate way. Agreed. Right? So I know in, in Ms. Douglas's class, She's very keen on using like pro proper terminology and talking about it in like a respectful way, yep. and in a, you know in a situation where maybe it's more small group and not like the whole classroom. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so that would be my advice to your question. Like, hey, I have like concerns. I really want to talk to somebody about something. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Then let's approach it in a more respectful way than like, yeah, me and my boo, we were or whatever, you know, and just make interrupting the whole learning experiment experience. Yeah, I feel like language. right into one of our next things. Which I feel it like does. is um, Ms. Christ and Ms. Uh, Diaz, your counselors, are mm -hmm. probably excellent, excellent people to talk mm -hmm. to. Um, you know, they get trained on how to talk to students and yeah. they are a good resource to talk about some things with, like that with you. And I think a lot of people are going to be more likely to want to have those conversations if you're doing it in a respectful, um, appropriate manner, opposed to just yeah. Hijacking a lesson with your, right. you know, with your your quote unquote drama. Oh, what is hijacking a lesson? Like I oh. teach about hijacking in my class. We talk about terrorism and things mm -hmm. like that. But I've never heard of hijacking. Yeah, academic terrorism is actually what, oh, is what we're talking about. That is about. interesting. Yeah. I have not learned about this so yet. So we have a policy in our classes yep. that um, we are here to teach, and the drama just has to kind of be checked at the door. So mm -hmm. a hijacking lesson would be what we're talking about, like the drama talking about like breaking up with their boyfriend or the girl drama that's going on or whatever. And so literally everyone else in the class, but like this handful of people, like just stop the learning process. Mm -hmm. So in our classes, we've had, you get one warning about hijacking and yep. then you gotta go because we're here to learn. And the hijacking is taking the education away from maybe the other 20 kids that are in our class because your conversation is more important than like what we're teaching. Right, and, and we're using that verbiage, right? Like, hey, yeah. right now you are hijacking the lesson, which kind of falls into what you, I think it was last week you were talking about how you were listening to a podcast and they were talking about, and I should mm -hmm. let you explain it, but how your brain actually can't listen to more than one conversation at a time. Right, so brain science, a uh, neuroscientist, he figured out that when you are listening to conversations at one time, you are just going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Your brain literally cannot listen to two conversations and absorb the information from two conversations. So if I'm in a classroom as a student and I'm talking to my friend, or my friend is saying something, I am gonna probably be more interested in what they are saying than the teacher and the lesson. Maybe not, but. Um, so that tells me that I'm going to listen to the, my friend and not the teacher, because even though I think I'm going back and forth, I can't really go back and forth. Yeah, and well, and let's just be honest, right? Mm -hmm. So if somebody comes in the room and they're talking about, you know, maybe something that's inappropriate for the learning environment, or someone's throwing something across the room, or whatever the other drama is, we're all going to be more inclined to gravitate towards that that scene mm -hmm. than we are yeah. towards, you know, our teacher who's trying to teach us something. And well, even for that's the teacher, it's nature. hard mm -hmm. to teach over it, it and is. or not to like acknowledge that it's going mm -hmm. on, especially when you see like the frustrated faces of the students in class mm -hmm. that. Maybe the reason, which is the last thing on our list, is like this person comes in late and the reason they're late is because of this whole big drama thing and then not only do they come in late, which is more work for us as teachers because we have to get you caught up in market and campus and change campus, but you're also coming in just like on fire, like ready to go where the rest of the class might be like already in the learning process and have like switched their brain from passing time to teaching time and we have to redo that for everyone because of your thing that's going yep, on. Yep. And like you said to the teachers, I know I've had moments where I'm like literally fumbling over what I'm saying as I'm trying to keep the lesson going right. because I'm even consumed by what mm -hmm. is happening over here. Yeah. And that's that's not fair to everybody else in the room, absolutely. Yeah. Um, final thing I think that we really want to hit on, and I know we're going long here, but this is good real conversation. Real talk. Um, so we're down to like 15 days, right? Did yeah. we do the math? Is mm -hmm. that right? Well, uh, 14 if you 14. say this day's over because yeah. we showed up, but that's a technicality. Either way, right? We are close to the end of the year. Um, eighth graders, you guys are going to go off to you know the high school that you're going to, and it's going to be new and it's exciting. It's kind of a little scary too, I'm sure. Um, but the point here is we all got to kind of work together here to get through the last 
14, 15 days. As a teacher, I want to remember you guys um, in a positive way, right? I want to remember your class as being the class who came and we got things done and we had fun, but we got things done. I, I hope you guys want to remember Smart Intermediate as a place where everyone felt kind of welcome and safe and, and all of the things we talked about, I think, just now fall into that, right? We want to leave on a positive note with um, good memories to share um, as we go off to, you know, whether it be west or central or north or uh, mid-city, wherever you're going. Or restaurant. Or the restaurant, <laughs> yes. The last year, I want to have good memories from Judy's Box weeks. Car, East Moline, if you're hungry for <laughs> delicious tacos, make sure you come check that out. Um, Yep. But and I'll be at Central High School for so everyone going if there. If you're going to Central, um, make sure you say hi to Miss uh, Weishauer. She loves low fives. Lesser known fact, not a high five, a low five is her preference. What do you mean low five? Like, Can you show me? Yeah, maybe so maybe like, they don't know. We're probably out of the screen here. But like, this is a high five, right? Which is fine. It's good. It's, it's really good. good. Mm -hmm. But a low five, and you kind of slide off. It's just, it's another take on high fives, low fives. It's fine. So, Try it sometime. It's got a, uh, oh, that was got a time and a place for but it. Anyways, for low fives We're at Central. It. We're not editing. We're not editing. <laughs> yeah, that's scary. Judy's box cars. Jenny's. Jenny's. Oh, oh. I'm so sorry. Yeah. Jenny's box cars. Yeah. Low fives at Central. Um, keep it real, everybody. Real talks. Let's really uh, end on a high note Let's here. Let's get through the Here at Smart. Yep. Yeah. Because you guys are awesome, and you're going to do great things. And go Eagles. Yeah, go Eagles. All right. Have a good rest of your day. Bye now. <laughs>